With the advent of Sibelius 5, a new way of working developed, allowing virtual drumline users to have built-in access to their sounds directly from within their Sibelius notation environment. At the heart of this is a new standard developed by Sibelius called SoundWorld. Now, SoundWorld isn't actually something that you see or touch while you're working in Sibelius. Rather, it lives under the hood, allowing you to focus less on technical things like MIDI channels, banks, controller changes, etc., and more on the task at hand, which is writing music. One of the main components of SoundWorld is the sound ID. Essentially, a sound ID is just a structured name that describes a sound. Let's take a look at just one specific sound from the Virtual Drumline Library. The sound ID we're going to look at here defines a 19-inch China symbol crescendo roll of medium length that mutes upon release. Let's take a look. It's an unpitched instrument. It's metal. It's a symbol. Chinese. It's a 19-inch symbol. It's a roll, which mutes, and it's the medium length roll from VDL. Essentially, this is a thumbprint for that specific sound in that specific patch of the Virtual Drumline Library. This is called a tree format, and each one of these descriptors is called a branch. There are thousands of these specific sound IDs for the VDL library alone, which is why the template and sound set development can be rather involved. Here's one reason this format can be really handy. Let's say you're using Virtual Drumline and you're working in a score that uses this sound ID. Then you send your score to another Sibelius user who doesn't use Virtual Drumline. What will happen is their playback configuration will fall back on a sound ID that they do have, but maybe less specific than the originally written sound ID. So this may not play back for them exactly as it does for you because they aren't using VDL, but Sibelius will intelligently fall back on an appropriate substitution sound that they do have. As SoundWorld has developed, it's undergone some changes since we released our first template for Sibelius 5.1. Most importantly, the sound ID structure changed a bit from Sibelius 5.1 to 5.2 in terms of the order and priority in which these sound ID branches appear. Let's take a look. Here's our original muted 19-inch cymbal roll as it appeared in the Sibelius 5.1 template. And now here's that same exact sound and how it appears in the Sibelius 5.2 template. Notice from this point on, the order of the branches has changed. This is mainly to allow for a more universal forward compatibility as SoundWorld develops. This won't really affect your process when writing in Sibelius, but we feel it's helpful for you to know about some of the more complex stuff taking place under the surface so you're aware of it. In the 525 template, the sound ID structure has changed again, but only in terms of certain things like key switches and controllers. When using the 525 template, it'll be important to use the 525 sound set 5.2 scores will operate fine in 5.2.5 as long as you're using a 5.2 sound set in your playback configuration. Older scores created with the 5.1 template will need to be converted to the 5.2.5 format, which we'll cover in a later video.